Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another video. This is a very special video because I am going to showcase my completed Tales from the Crypt run. I know that ECs are not necessarily everyone's cup of tea, especially nowadays uh, in a comic book community. And I don't just mean that YouTube, I just mean a comic book community across all different forms of media. Um, that is very hyper focused on Marvel books and some DC books to some extent and that's understandable so I understand that seeing uh, some EC's Tales from the Crypts may not necessarily be on top of their list but it's very important to me because uh, when some of my first comics or at least in the reprint form were EC books so after long last, what I'm gonna, I was able to finally complete my collection. But what I'm gonna do now is like I did with my X-Men collection. Um, I recently completed uh, my X-Men Silver Age run. I made a video about that. Some of you tuned in. For those of you that didn't tune in, you could always check my videos. It came out I think a couple of weeks ago. But anyway, like that video, I'm gonna switch the viewpoint so you can see just the book and not necessarily me, but during the course of the video when I show off all the Tales from the Crypt books, I'll tell you a little bit about them, their grades, and I'll also give you a little information on each title when it comes to the actual HBO series. Now I know a lot of people that are familiar with Tales from the Crypt know it from the HBO TV series. The series took a lot of stories naturally from Tales from the Crypt, but a lot of stories came from other EC New Trend titles, in particular Vault of Horror, Haunt of Fear, Shock Suspense stories, some Crime Suspense stories, and I think they even took from Two Fisted Tales. I, I don't really know. But anyway, I will tell you which HBO episode was in whatever Tales from the Crypt book I'm showing in this in the, in the video so I hope you enjoy for those of you that really like Tales from the Crypt EC books pre-code books really cool covers it will be uh, a bit of a treat for you so hope you enjoy the video Hey everyone, here we go. Now we're going to start off with number 46. I'll talk to you a little bit about these issues as we go along because there's a lot to cover and I don't want to spend too much time talking about them, although I will dedicate some time talking about these books. It's because it's a real pleasure, for me at least, to finally have completed my entire Tales from the Crypt run or what I consider the Tales from the Crypt run. So we'll start off with number 46. This after you know, I, I regraded everything, like I said in my previous video, I was going to go through all the books and regrade them. Some of them I graded, you know, uh, years ago, and I wanted to make sure that I graded them properly this time for this video. So anyway, starting off with the very last issue, it, sometimes it's considered a scarce issue of Tales from the Crypt, number 46, Great Werewolf Cover. This is a 5.5. Five. Now, previously, I had a 3.0. And I was fortunate enough to upgrade this book from a particular seller on eBay that had sold me my upgraded uh, Cryptoterra 18. I'll talk a little bit more about him uh, when I get to the other books. But here it is, 46. I give it a 5.5. Five. Um, the only real problem with it, the reason why I give it a 5.5 five is because it has this color break crease right here and this little piece over here. The rest of the book, both front and back and inside is absolutely stunning especially for a black cover uh, the the white white part of it are really shines out um, another piece of information about this particular issue is the uh, tales from the crypt movie that came out in the early 70s from amicus blind alleys was taken from this issue and made into an episode well a segment in that movie from, I believe it was 1972. 
Okay, so moving along with the next issue, number 45, another stunning copy. Again, this book here was purchased from the same guy that I purchased the last issue I showed you, number 46, and my Cryptoterra 18. I'll mention him again when I get to Crypto 18, which will be towards the end of this video. Um, previously, I had probably a 2.0, a 2.5 copy of this. It looked pretty good. Not bad for a 2.0, It was a, <laughs> It was a pretty decent looking book. It wasn't falling apart, but it had some uh, water damage. And to me, and to, you know, Overstreet and everyone else who grades, I think, I believe at least, that takes the grade down a lot. But anyway, I was able to upgrade this, like I said, from the same guy I bought the 46 and the COT18 to a 6.0 copy. It's really stunning. Very nice looking copy. Uh, the only problem I think with it, uh, other than the defects that I, which was the reason why I give it a 6.0, is you see it's a little, it's a, it's not centered that well, you know, and a couple of my upgrades are not centered too well, but still they're fine by me and they, I think they look good. Uh, one last piece of information about this uh, on the HBO TV series, as we're pretty much all familiar with when it comes to Tales from the Crypt, I think more so than the Amicus films from the early 70s. Uh, season two, the uh, story, The Switch, was used. That was the one that was directed by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, season two was really, really popular. I mean, obviously season one, we only had six episodes, was really popular. And season two started really with a bang and had a ton of great episodes, a lot of great guest stars. And he, Donald Schwarzenegger, directed that episode. And it was, I think, really a, a really good one. Okay. Moving along. Here we have number 44. A uh, pretty cool book. I give it a 4.0. Now, like in my previous video, the reason why I give it a 4.0 is because it has a tear over here. But that's really, I mean, obviously it has some, you know, some spine wear and all that stuff, but it's a good solid book. But because of that tear, it could very well be a 4.5 or even a 5.0. I don't know. But for me, I feel comfortable just giving this book a 4.0. Um, my criteria for this, very similar to my x-men run my uh 60s silver age x-men run it has to be 4.0 or better sometimes i'll accept a 3.5 but below a 3.5 needs an upgrade and there are four books in this entire uh run that i'm going to show you today that need upgrades that are below 4.0 but this is one of the ones that uh is right there at 4.0 so it's pretty good for me other than the grade, we go back to the HBO show, season five, Forever Ambergris. That was a pretty good episode, I think. All right. Here we have number 43, another upgrade. I, I originally had a 3.5 of this, and this is a 6.0. Uh, really nice copy, really nice, um, really stunning. Moving along, we have number 42. Now, there are no episodes, uh, there was no um, stories from this particular issue used on HBO or in the movie, so it's just, you know, just your plain issue. This is a nice 5.5 five copy, which I purchased from Ted at Superworld Comics. Now, the, the, the sellers that I mentioned in this video uh, no one's paying me to give them free advertising. But the only reason why I bring them up is because I feel that they've done good uh, by me. You know, uh, they may have given me a good deal on a book, or they may have accepted a trade for so that I could upgrade another issue. And I think Ted is one of those guys that uh, is, has been really good for me, uh, really good to me with many books, including uh, several uh, Tales from the Crypts. So. I will mention some sellers here and there. So anyway, it's a nice 5.5 five copy. It could use a press uh, right around here. Uh, whether or not that's going to bring it up to a 6, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It still meets my criteria of being over 4.0. And it's a great vampire cover, a great, great memorable vampire cover, a great story. I think it's By Dawn's Early Light, which is the cover story. Um, great book. Now moving along to... Ooh, maybe I should just... 
take these out, yeah. All right, moving along to a nice 5.5 five copy, as you can see, all right. This was the second to the last book I needed to complete my Tales from the Crypt run. Um, it just worked out that way. There was no reason why I tried, to, why I was avoiding getting this book. It just worked out that way. But anyway, as you can see, a nice 5.5 five copy, all right. Now, in this one, when it comes to the HBO show, Season 6, Operation Friendship. Decent episode. Again, like I said all before, that the felt that the show was starting to go downhill after around season four. So, you know, even though season four, seasons four, five, and six had some pretty good episodes, it was kind of few and far between uh, compared to seasons two and three. But anyway, Operation Friendship. Remove this, and here we have a beauty of a cover classic cover by you know well they're all uh, most of the books and tales from the crib were done by uh, covers were done by jack davis this is a book number 40 that i previously had a cgc 3.0 which i don't think i ever showed on my channel for whatever reason but anyway uh, the chance came up for me to upgrade it and i did i upgraded it to this beautiful 6.5 copy i just i just love this cover you know, it took a while, as you can see the Russ Cochran books right here. I have Haunt of Fears off camera, but these are the vaults, these are the crypts. I got the crypts first back in 1990, so I was familiar with all the covers of Tales from the Crypt as I'm familiar with all the covers of Alt of Horror and Haunt of Fear. At first, this cover never really did it for me, but then I really started getting into it and realized how just how wonderful it is. Anyway, when it comes to the HBO show, they did use a story from here, Season 5, Food for Thought. All right, We're moving along. This book right here, number 39, is a 5.5 copy, and it's one of my favorite books. Uh, the reason why is because this was the very first Tales from the Crypt book I read. I read it in a reprint form through the um, uh, Gladstone reprints of uh, the early 1990s, 1990. I believe I got it. Uh, 31 years ago around this time in August of 1990. So anyway, that was the first time I read a Tales from the Crypt book when I went to the mall looking for Tales from the Crypt after really enjoying the show and seeing that these were comics. I mean, I didn't know that I was getting the reprint, <laughs> but this was the one that came out, the reprint of this. They were double size issues, which means, uh, which meant that they had a Tales from the Crypt book and they had another issue of an EC book included. Uh, for number three, the Gladstone reprints. In that case, it was obviously number 39 and uh, uh, Crime Suspense Stories number one. So it was a really good reprint. It had a lot of great stuff. But um, yeah, definitely one of my favorites. And this was really the issue that made me a fan of comic books. And I would later say that it was X-Men that made me a collector of comics, which is true. For this particular issue, season three of the HBO show Undertaking Pallor. All right. This next book here was a gift. Uh, this was gifted to me by Dr. Von Schiller several years ago. Um, it was very nice of him to do so. This copy here, it, in my estimation, I think it's another 5.5 five copy. When it comes to, and it has a, a date stamp here, you know, quite a few of my Tales from the Crypt books have date stamps. A lot of them, though, have it on the back cover. There are some that have it on the front cover, like this one, but a lot of them have it on the back cover. But anyway, when it comes to the HBO show, there are two here, two stories from this book that were used. The first one was in season three, and it was called Morning Mess. The second one was in season six, and that was Only Skin Deep. So, if you're looking to collect these be based off of what stories were in these books that were on the HBO show, number 38 is definitely a good one because it has two. All right.
right. Here we have number 37. This is a classic uh, zombie cover. Very classic. And it's also an upgrade. Um, this was I, I upgraded it uh, maybe over a year ago. And remember I, remember I mentioned Superworld, Ted? Well, I had a, a copy. It was really nice looking. It really was. It was almost as nice looking as this. But the problem with it was that it was detached at the front, uh, at the cover, the top staple. So Ted took my copy. And he gave me this, and of course I had to pay a difference, you know, what he valued that one compared to what he was selling for this for. And that's how I got this, so it really worked out very well. Um, great, again, again, great cover. Um, this book here is a 5.5, five, all right? And season three used the story, the first story, I believe, in this, Dead Right. Now, when it comes to the show, they used the story, but they called it something different on the show. They called it Abracadaver. It was in, like, again, I said it was in season three. Uh, I think largely they did that because in season two, the very first episode of season two on the HBO show, they had a, an episode called Dead Right, which was based off a shock suspense stories, number six story. That was the one with Demi Moore and Jeffrey Tambor, one of the best episodes. Well, they already called that Dead Right. I guess they didn't want in the next season another episode called Dead Right. But there were two dead right stories in EC, one from Shock and one from Crypt. Instead, they just decided to rename it for the show, Abracadaver. But it's called Dead Right. I know. I know, it's a long explanation. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to just start leaving some on here like I was doing earlier. All right, number 36. Here we have another upgraded copy. Previously, I think I had a 3.0 or a 3.5 copy or whatever, and, you know, it was okay. You know, it wasn't anything like, oh, I just couldn't wait to get rid of. But again, opportunity came up where I could get an upgrade, so I took it. And this upgrade is a 6.0. It's really nice. Again, like the Tales from the Crypt 45, you could see it's, you know, not well-centered. And that could be a problem for some collectors. It's not really that big of a problem for me unless it's so badly off-centered. And I don't think these are badly off-centered. So it's a great book. For the HBO show, we have season four, Curiosity Killed. I think it was, I think it was a really weak episode. It wasn't very interesting. And it, it, was just, it wasn't really done well. Again, like I was saying earlier, how some of the episodes in season four, that's when the cracks of the foundation of the show began. And that was definitely one of the episodes that just was like, Ugh. You see it once, you don't have to see it again. Here we have number 35, classic werewolf cover. Probably the best werewolf cover at, e at EC. I mean, I'm not well known. I, I don't really know too many werewolf covers in the pre-code era to say this is the best. But I could say at EC, I think at least, this is the best one. All right, And there are quite a few good ones too. We saw one with, with the first book I showed. So anyway, this is a 5.0 copy. Now, no, no episode, HBO didn't borrow anything from this book, but, but the Vault of Horror movie did. In the, that was the sequel to the Tales from the Crypt movie in the early 70s by Amicus. It's the very first segment called Midnight Mess. It's really, I love that. I love that segment. This is such a good movie, too. Here we have number 34. Now, there's some significance at this issue because this was the very first Tales from the Crypt book I bought. I bought it from Zap Comics, actually, at the New York Comic Con in 2015. It's a 4.0. All right, you know, it has a little chip out here. And if, even though it meets my criteria, if I do one day see a better copy for sale that I want to spend the money on, I will get it. But if, I think this is fine, though, the way it is, to be quite honest. But anyway... When it comes to the HBO show, season five, oil's well, it ends well. And as a matter of fact, the actor that voices uh, the Crypt Keeper had a cameo uh, in that show where you finally get to see the actor, John Kasser. Okay, so. Okay, sorry, whatever way you pronounce his name. All right, moving along. This one right here, a classic one. This is one of the more key issues when it comes to Tales from the Crypt. Sometimes it's hard to find those keys when you're buying ECs 
unless it's a first appearance of the Crypt Keeper or a number one or whatever it is. This is an origin story, the origin of the Crypt Keeper. All right, this is a 6.0 copy that I bought at Heroes, Heroes Con uh, in Charlotte back in 2018. I bought this from Dale Roberts. A um, couple of things with this. The, again, the Volta Horror movie that I was just talking about, uh, that I just talked about a few, minute, few, mom, few moments ago. Uh, this trick will kill you. All right. When it comes to the HBO show, it's got a couple of things too. Season two, the origin, the origin story, Lower Birth. And season four, uh, None But the Lonely Heart. That was an okay episode from season four. So, pretty cool. Let me get rid of these. We're moving right along. I know this is a long video, but you know, it's fun to talk about this stuff and show it. Tales from the Crypt number 32. Again, I bought this from Dale Roberts, but I purchased this at the New York Comic Con in 2018. This is a 4.0 copy. It needs a press, but it's a 4.0 copy. I think it has a classic cover, uh, you know, with the elephant about to smash the, the girl's head. Uh, when it comes to the HBO show, Cutting Cards. That was the episode that made me leave my house, or at least when I left my house and went to the mall, to go to the comic book shop and say, do you have Tales from the Crypt books? So it was really that episode, that story, that <laughs> began my comic book journey. And it comes from this book right here. All right. Next up is number 31. A really, really nice copy. The only problem with it is there's a little chip out over here. I give it a 5.5. Five. The rest of the book is really nice, really stunning. The colors are really deep and it's uh, quite beautiful. With this one here, like I said, it's a 5.5 five. and season two, probably the best season, arguably, um, of Tales from the Crypt, they used, uh, in this book, it's called Cayman's Calamity. But for the show, they call it Corman's Calamity. It's basically the same idea, uh, more or less. In the episode, the guy's drawing pictures. He's taking these pills, and then he's drawing pictures. He works for actually Tales from the Crypt, and he's drawing these comics. And he's drawing these creatures, and the creatures are coming to life, and it's you know led to believe that the pills are, helping, are doing that. So it's a really good episode. All right, I, I liked it a lot. So 31. Now this next one here, number 30, right, has a classic cover, you know, about the, uh, the, the miner and all that stuff. But number 30 was the very last Tales from the Crypt book I needed. Remember I said number 41 was the second to the last, 30 was the last. And again, like with 41, there was no particular reason why I would save 30 for last. It just it worked out that way. So anyway, we have a nice... Uh, 4.5 copy. I was very happy to finally get this book. And nothing, as far as I know, as far as my research, was used uh, on the HBO show. No, no stories were used in this. Let me take these down because I have a CGC one up next. Here we have number 45. A nice 4.5. Really cool book. Again, nothing from HBO was uh, nothing in this book was used on HBO or the movies. It's just a nice book, cool book. I believe this is the first Jack Davis cover from Tales from the Crypt, and he would do every cover until the end of the series. Um, pretty good stories. Uh, I really liked uh, Sucker for a Spider, which was the last one drawn by Graham Engels. That was my favorite. That's the most memorable when it comes to this book for me. Hmm, nothing else to say about it. All right, now here we have number 28. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I was talking about my criteria. Everything has to be a 4.0. And there are still four books in this entire run that I'm going to show you today that need to be upgraded. Well, this is the first of those four. All right, it's got a little bit of uh, moisture damage here, and it did some damage to the inside cover. It looks nice, though. It really does. It's not a bad, it's not a bad looking book. But for me, I want to get something without that. And I'd like to. Uh, sell it sell it off once I get my upgrade but this was again one of the one of the first one of the handful uh, of first Tales from the Crypt books I purchased 
several years ago. And in this one here, number 28, a couple of things. The Vault of Horror movie comes up again. They, uh, they use Bargain in Death. Pretty good. I mean, that was, I think, one of the weaker segments of that movie, but it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. It had more humor in it, a little bit more humor in it, which was uh, it lightened up the mood a bit. But it was still pretty cool. And in season two, The Ventriloquist's Dummy. That was by far one of my favorite episodes of season two. Favorite episodes that I saw on Tales from the Crypt series. Here we have number 27, one of my favorite uh, favorite uh, issues. This was a book I upgraded. See the date stamp over here. Um, this is a 4.5 copy. Wait, did I say? Well, I'm sorry. Did I say what this was? This was, I, I give this one here a 3.5. Sorry, I think I left that out. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I tell everybody what the grades are. But the, the one previous is 3.5. This one's a 4.5. I'm happy with it. A uh, little piece out here, that's why I give it a 4.5. And it's got a little bit of a, you know, tanning up on here. So we take a little bit, uh, take a little bit more off. But other than that, it's really good, tight uh, issue. Uh, and again, this is an upgrade. I, I sold my original copy off, which I think was maybe a 3.0. I sold it a couple of years ago, and, and, I, and I purchased this one over a year ago. It took me a while to get it, but I finally did, and I was happy. When it comes to the HBO show, uh, Season 5, Well-Cooked Hams. That's the one with Martin Sheen, where he's the magician. Pretty good. Next one. As you can see, it's a CGC slab that says 4.0. It's number 26. This is another upgrade. <laughs> this is the book that I've upgraded. This is the third time I'm upgrading this book. And will I upgrade it again? Who knows? <laughs> but it does meet my criteria being a 4.0. Uh, I upgraded the other ones because they had a detached staple, a detached cover, a detached centerfold. And it's hard to find this book for me at least and when you find it it's so expensive it really is so it upgrading it becomes a bit of a, a hassle and finding it is a hassle so I might just be happy with what I have but anyway with number 26 it's a great a great up a great issue too it really is it's nice we go back to the Vault of Horror movie. So it, it, Tales from the Crypt, this Tales from the Crypt run here had a lot of, the Vault of Horror movie used a lot of stories from Tales from the Crypt rather than actual Vault of Horror. <laughs> uh, pretty interesting how that worked out. But anyway, the Vault of Horror movie, uh, the very last segment was drawn and quartered. Now, you might remember that actor. He was the Doctor from Doctor Who. I think he was one of the more famous, popular Doctor Who uh, character, uh, Doctor Who doctors, you know. I don't know. I don't know if he was the third or the fourth. Maybe Doctor Who fans could fill me in in the comments. I'm not that familiar with Doctor Who, but I know that he was Doctor Who, the Doctor, and all that stuff. So that's the significance of this one when it comes to uh, media. All right, now here is the second of four books that I want to upgrade in this run. Number 25, this is a 3.0 copy. It's, again, not a bad-looking 3.0, but I feel I could do better. I want better. I'll be happy with a 4 or a 4.5 or a 5. <laughs> but anyway, uh, like I said, uh, it's a 3.0 copy, and two stories from here were taken and used in the uh, the show hbo show first came in season two judy you're not yourself today then in the very next season the ver i believe it was the first episode love to death i wasn't a big fan of judy you're not yourself today it was kind of boring you know i couldn't care less about that story but love to death was pretty good that was a pretty good episode and here's the third of four four books that i need to upgrade this is a nice 3.0 copy but it has some price stamps on it and it has a little bit of tape on the inside the cover but the, here's the thing about the tape it's not holding anything together it's not holding the cover on but 
I've been told that sometimes people used to put tape on, you know, inside the cover to hold the cover on, even when the staples weren't detached, even when the cover wasn't detached. They would do that just to keep, you know, to, to protect it more. Just the way some people with those, um, uh, you know, those uh, square bound uh, spines from the 70s and the 60s, the Marvel books, like the Giant Size X Men, the Marvel superheroes, people would put extra staples in them, even though the glue on the spine didn't wear out. They would just put the staples on it just to make sure that the cover doesn't come off. So I think that was the case with this one. But anyway, I, I'd like to upgrade it. It's a 3.0 copy, and this is probably this is going to be hard to upgrade. Unlike 25 and 28, this one's going to be a little harder because in even in 3.0s, it's because of this cover. It, it goes for so much money, and it's going to be some time for me to actually find the right copy and find the right price. So for number 24, there's nothing used in either in the movies or in the TV show. So we move on to number 23. This is probably one of my favorite, if not favorite, uh, books, uh, issues in Tales from the Crypt. We have number 23. This is a 4.0 copy. Okay. Now, in this one, the actual Tales from the Crypt movie used Reflection of Death as one of their segments. I think it was the second one, the second segment in that movie. It was really good. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's when you read the story and when you watch the actual Epi uh, sh uh, segment on in the movie it might seem a little slow but it actually is uh, very good very uh, psychologically good now when it comes to the HBO series the uh, season 7 used last respects and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you the, the episode and the story in here the only thing they have in common is the title there's nothing else in common with uh, the two, it's, which is kind of disheartening because I thought Last Respects in this was a really good story. All right, we're, we're getting to the end. We're getting to the end. Now we have a CBCS copy. Here we go. Who says I don't buy CBCS? <laughs> um, 4.5, number 22. Now, uh, this is the first time you actually see all three on the, on the cover of Tales from the Crypt. Uh, previously, they just showed the Crypt Keeper. All right. So here we have number 22, uh, 4.5. When it comes to the HBO show, uh, season two, The Thing from the Grave. Okay. And I'll mention it in this book. The last, uh, the last story in this book is the Curse of the Arnold Clan. If you just like to read stories and just really want to read a good story, that is, I think, one of the best. And I think it's a little underrated. It's not always talked about as much when it comes well, with an EC fans. So check that out. If you, have, if you get a chance to get this book raw or get a reprint of it, it's really good. So now we're winding down. Here we have Tales from the Crypt number, 20, number 21. Great, great cover by Feldstein. I, I, I enjoy Feldstein's work. This copy right here is a 4.5 copy. And in season five of the HBO show, House of Horror was used. Moving along. Now, some may argue this is Tales from the Crypt number one because this is the first time the series is called Tales from the Crypt. I'll briefly go over it with you for those of you just first tuning into my channel and first time you're seeing this. Um, Tales from the Crypt wasn't always called Tales from the Crypt, but the numbering system for the series stayed the same. This is what I'm talking about. The, the, the series started out as International Crime Patrol. And I don't remember what issue, but early on, International Crime Patrol became Crime Patrol. And in Crime Patrol 15, which you're going to see in a little bit, that's when EC introduced the Crypt Keeper and the Crypt of Terror. And it went into Crime Patrol 16. It became so popular. So with issue 17, instead of just starting with number one, they just changed Crime Patrol to the Crypt of Terror. And then for whatever reason, with issue 20, they started calling it Tales from the Crypt, but they kept the numbering system. I know there's a reason why Bill Gaines did that. 
but I don't know it off the top of my head. Uh, so for those of you out there that know, you could put it in the comments or you just know and keep it to yourselves, whatever. But here we have number 20. This was a very hard issue for me to get. Originally, I think it was in 2017, I purchased a 1.5 copy at the New York Comic Con. And within six months, I said, this is only a 1.5. Let me get rid of it. And I did. And it took me a couple of years to get this book again because it's it's not that easy to get and it's not that easy to pay for but I managed to get it a few years ago so I was very happy that I was able to finally bring it back to my collection a few years ago but this is a nice uh, 4.0 copy okay and when it comes to the HBO show we go back to season 7 they used Fatal Caper Now we get into the Crypt of Terrors. Like I was telling you a few moments ago with the titles and all that stuff. Why they were, you know, the title changed and all that. We have number 19. Crypt of Terror number 19. Great, great cover. I like the greens and all that stuff. And it's classic EC guy thinking or talking about something. A noise or something bad that he did. Wondering what's going on. And whatever bad he did is now coming back to get him. And in this case, this guy murdered his wife. And you know, what, he's wondering what's... What's all the, the why why are the drums beating in the background? Well, it's because people brought her back to life through voodoo. But you see that often in some of these Tales from the Crypt books and, and all EC horror books. But but number 19 is a 4.5 copy, but it doesn't use anything. Nothing's used from this book on the show, on the HBO show or in the movies. So Now, I mentioned this one earlier. This and number 23 are my two favorite issues of the Tales from the Crypt run. Crypt of Terror number 18. This is a nice 4.0 copy. It would be higher, but the, in the inside there are a couple pages that have little tears in the middle. For whatever reason, there are little tears on it. I don't know. And someone put little pieces of tape on it. Anyway, this is a Gary Arlington copy. Um, Gary Arlington, I believe, was the first person to open up a comic book shop in San Francisco in the 1960s and he was a big EC fan so it's pretty cool to have something that he had now I know people say that Gary typically bought 50 issues or 100 issues of each book I don't know how true that is I'm not a Gary Arlington historian but you know I don't care as long as it's it's just a nice little piece of history to have for me but I, I didn't get it because it's a Gary Arlington copy I got it because it's a, a nice upgrade to tell a uh, crypto terror uh, 18. I originally had a 3.0, maybe even a 2.5 copy of Crypt of Terror. I was just so happy to get it because it took me so long to get. And then when this copy came up, I purchased it. When it comes to the HBO show, season two again, again, I think it's the best season, Mute Witness to Murder. That one was used. And here we have... Crypt of Terror 17. It's getting a little hard to fit here. This is the last book I need to upgrade. This book right here is a 3.0 copy, but you know it has some staining in it, and I think that and it has a tear right over here. You can't really see it, but it still looks very good. The colors pop, but it's still something that I'd like to upgrade. This is probably going to be the hardest book to upgrade. This and the number 24, but when the time is right, it'll happen. But anyway, uh, Crypt of Terror 17, it was wonderful to get this book i bought it ooh, about four four years ago now i think four or five years ago but um when it comes to the hbo show this one here the very first episode of season one was used uh a, a very first episode of season one uh the, the story that was used was the man who was death yeah so uh, that that uh, season one was really good. Uh, they, they had a lot of great episodes. And I think there was maybe one or two that were just okay. But not bad, but just okay. But Man Who Was Death was a classic one. And it came from this issue here. Now I'm going to show you the very last two as we pretty much conclude this. Thank you for sticking, sticking with me throughout this whole video. I know it was very long. We have Crime Patrol 16. Now, the two books I'm going to show, HBO didn't use any anything, any stories from these uh, issues. This is a nice, this might very well be a 3.5 copy. Now, I, I know I said earlier that, well, you know, anything under 4.0 I like to upgrade. I'm not really looking to upgrade this. Originally, 
I had a 1.5 copy I purchased again at the New York Comic Con in 2017. It was busted. So you find my New York uh, Comic Con uh, Hall 2017, you'd see it. The spine was all messed up. It was just really nasty. So I sold it. And uh, I told you that was the one where the guy, I, I, I listed it as a 1.5 and the guy got it graded by CBCS and it got a 1.8. I don't know why he shared that with me. Was it was it something that he was like, hey, look, your grading was wrong. I got a 1.8. I'm like, well, well, congratulations. You just paid for this copy, which is a 3.5. But anyway, um, pretty cool. If, if Again, if the chance comes to upgrade it, I will, but I'm not actively looking because it's, it's not an easy book to find, you know. It's not that easy to find, uh, to upgrade. And let me just take this out of here. For the grand finale, the very last book in which I consider the Tales from the Crypt run. It starts with this one. Crime Patrol 15. This is the very first. It's a 4.5 as you can see. No, Nothing was used in media when it comes to the HBO show or the movies. But that's okay. It's a 4.5 copy of Crime Patrol 15. The very first appearance of the Crypt, Crypt Keeper and the Crypt of Terror. I love this book. And it's uh, definitely a, a grail-ish book. You know, I know that word grail is used over and over again in this hobby. Uh, I, you know, all oh, this is the, these are all my grail books. Well, I thought there was only one holy grail, but whatever. It's fine. It's just something that people say. But it's grail-ish, <laughs> okay? Um, it's not that easy to find, too. It really isn't. And... Um, I don't know. It's just, I guess there are not too many, and I'm not saying it's rare or anything. It's just that some people are just not really as interested in these books as they are in the Marvel books or in the DC books. More so the Marvel books, I think, or at least right now as of August 2021. But this is the very last one. It was it was quite an achievement to get it to some three years ago. Um, I bought it raw. I had it pressed. I had it cleaned. I thought it was a 3.0 copy when I got it. It may very well have been a 3.0 copy when I got it or a 3.5. So it pressed and cleaned to a 4.5, which I'm happy with that. So that is my entire Tales from the Crypt run. Thank you all for watching. I know this video was long, and I talked a lot about each issue, some issues more so than others. But I just wanted to share this with you. It's an accomplishment, just as some of you out there seek to accomplish your goals in collecting. Maybe getting all the amazing Spider-Man books, or maybe getting all the X-Men books, or maybe getting all of this or all of that, whatever it is, whatever you consider a run. A run does not necessarily have to be every issue in a single volume, the way some of the elitists in this hobby would tell you or make you feel. It's whatever you want. And, you know, we all collect for different reasons. We collect for our collection. Or we collect maybe to sell down the line. We collect to flip. All are welcome. And it's all interesting. And it, and it is interesting to hear from everybody. Thank you for watching, everybody. And take care. Be safe.